What is going on guys? Matt O'Leary back with another video. Today we got a mega video. Why? Because it is the New York Jets 2024 free agency preview. We will be going through positions of need. We'll be going through guys that get brought up a lot for the New York Jets at each position of need. We'll be talking about, you know, in all different kinds of price ranges, the cream of the crop, the high guys, the ones who are going to get paid a ton of money, the maybe the under the radar ones, who would be a good fit, who wouldn't be a good fit, and all of that good stuff. I'm really excited to get into this one. And we got to start with the offensive line. The New York Jets need to find three new starters on the offensive line. And because they have two guys who can play multiple positions, we have to cover offensive tackle, center, and guard because we have no idea what the Jets' plan is right now at those positions. They could keep Elijah Vera Tucker at guard. They could play him at center. They could keep, uh, keep Joe Tippman at center. They could play him at guard. So we're going to give you all the different options the Jets can go. So let's hop into it. At offensive tackle, I think the name that gets brought up a ton is Tyron Smith, 33 years old from the Dallas Cowboys. His projected contract is one year, $10 million. Now, when he is on the field, key key phrase, when on the field, still an elite level tackle. He just allowed 18 pressures and one sack in 13 games. Here's the problem. Tyron Smith misses time every single season. He has not played more than 13 games in a season since 2015. 2015, nine years ago, was the last time he played a full season. Since then, he's missed at least three games every single year. Again, when on the field, there is no denying his talent. So you have to then decide, is it worth it? Do I think the New York Jets should sign a left tackle who went on the field is phenomenal, but is going to miss some time? You can make a case for it. I get it. That's just something that, like, when talking about Tyron Smith, you can't ignore the injuries because, again, he, he gets banged up. He's going to miss time every single year. Another name that gets brought up a ton is one that I like a lot, Mike Onwenu, 26 years old. His projected contract, four years, 58 million, 14.5 AAV. He plays right tackle and right guard. So the Jets, it's going to be contingent on what they, if they were to sign him, you know, they have options on what they could do with Elijah Vera Tucker, because on Wayne, who could play guard or tackle, AVT could play guard or tackle. So find out where they're going to play, where they're most comfortable, plug them in on the right side, whatever option on Wayne at guard or on Wayne at tackle, however they want to do it. Um, he's allowed three sacks, 23 pressures this last year, very few penalties, which I think is incredibly clutch. I like, again, I really like that he is someone who. Uh, would be a versatile piece that he could play guard or tackle. The Jets like offensive linemen who have positional flexibility. I know they are trying to get these guys uh, that they currently have in Joe Tipman and Elijah Vera Tucker in a more permanent spot. But uh, Anwenu is a name because of his flexibility that I would really keep an eye on. And I think he's worth that contract. That's something else that I want to get into and some names to avoid. Some guys are going to get paid 14 plus million AAVs aren't going to be worth it. So on the offensive line, are really the the big key positions I wanted to talk about or highlight the guys that I think get brought up the most and then close each position group with guys I would avoid and guys that I like in all different kinds of price points. I'm not going to be like, hey, ignore all these guys because they are priced too high. But no, we're going to go through and, and tell you why. Guys I would avoid, Jonah Williams, his projected contract, four years with a $15 million AAV. Guy's just not good. Um, uh, he's a name recognition guy. He's a former first round pick. He's played left tackle or, and right tackle with the Cincinnati Bengals. Every single year, he gives up a ton of penalties. Every single year, he gives up a ton of sacks. He was a little bit better on the right side this year, but you'd be significantly overpaying. You can get much, much better value contracts. Jonah Williams would be one. I think if you sign him, then it's going to be the Lake and Tomlinson thing where you're looking at like, when can we get out of this contract? I wouldn't like it. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, someone else, Trent Brown, I put in that same category. Now, he's a little bit cheaper. His projected contract is two years with a $7.5 million AAV, so about half of that. But uh, another one who is who gets banged up a lot, not this past year, the year prior, so 2022 was the last time he played a full season. Um, you know, he, he doesn't play a ton of games. He has significant weight issues. He's on the wrong side of 30 now. How much longer is his body going to hold up? He's already shown some signs of breaking down. That's not an investment that I would want the New York Jets to make. And then the last one for guys I would avoid. I get asked sometimes about this, bringing Mekhi Becton back on a one-year prove-it deal. Try to upgrade, please. 
Uh, Makai is an easy guy to root for, right? Like, that's not to deny his – he had a very good rookie season. Injuries, unfortunately, took over in the second and third year. I was happy that he was able to work his way back and stay healthy. He only missed the one game this year, which, you know, that that's great. I'm happy for him that his health was good, but – that's only half the battle. He was an absolute penalty machine last year, was up towards the top of the league in penalties for offensive tackles. And when he wasn't getting penalties, he wasn't really all that effective. I think this is just one of those situations where it's better for both sides to move on. He had some questionable comments about uh, Keith Carter, the Jets offensive line coach. Not that I necessarily blame him for those comments, but it just feels like the, this. it's best for both sides to to move on. Sometimes that's the reality. And for Beckton, I think that would be wise. So I mentioned on Wainu as a guy that I like, but I'll give you two more guys and not the as high priced tier in kind of the middle of the road. Jermaine, Jermaine or Luminor from the Vegas Raiders been their right tackle the last two years and has been productive. Is he a star? No, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Jermaine Illuminor is a star, but at his projected deal, which is two years, 7.25 million AAV, can he come in and be an average to a, you know, plus a little bit above average starter. Yeah. And that would help a lot. Uh, and again, like he's not going to cost you a whole lot. Yes. He's a right tackle and you're not going to, and that's why you're not paying a big money to move over and, and change sides. Uh, but at, at that price point, I think he's one of the best bang for your buck options on the free agent market at the tackle spot. And then one more name. It's a familiar name, George Fant. Uh, he was the right tackle for the Houston Texans last year. He spent a lot of time with the jets Injuries played a factor when he struggled in 2022, uh, but was very productive for the Jets in 2021 in Makai Becton's absence. Uh, George Fant's a really interesting name. One year, $5 million is a projected contract. Is he my favorite option? No, but can you do a lot worse than bringing George Fant in at one year, $5 million to be a starter? Yeah, you could. I, I think something that would be worse is paying Jonah Williams $15 million a year to be your starter. That That's something I would avoid. Okay, let's get to the guards because the Jets very well could be in the market for a couple guards. Or who knows? Maybe they play uh, both. I almost said Lakin Tomlinson. Jeez. AVT and Joe Tittman at guard, and then they sign center and a tackle and draft. A like, there's many ways they can go about filling it, but we're going to talk about all three positions on the line. Uh, Robert Hunt is a name that gets brought up a ton. He's just 27 years old. Four years, 17.5 million AAV contract he's projected. So he's going to get paid. You know, the big bucks. So I'm giving you someone on the higher end of the market that gets talked about a lot. He plays right guard. Something that I like is it weakens a divisional opponent in the Miami Dolphins. He's never allowed more than three sacks in a season. That's good. Penalties could be an issue, though. He had eight plus penalties in three of his four seasons. He's a very, very good offensive guard. He's going to get paid a lot of money. Uh, would be a significant upgrade to what they have. But you have to take into account the kind of money that he is going to get. Like he's going to get a big, a big, big, big contract. Um, maybe the jets do spend big on the offensive line and at guard in particular. Um, Hunt is a good option. I just, I'm unsure if the jets are going to go that high of the market. We'll see. Next up is Kevin Zeitler. That's he's a little bit of an older veteran at 34 years old, but his projected contract two years, 7.5 million AAV. This, you know what this screams to me? It's giving Alan Fanica with the New York Jets in 2008 and 2009. He is still an elite level pass blocker, two sacks, 19 pressures. He's allowed, uh, he's given up, excuse me, two sacks or less in the last four seasons, in each of the last four seasons. Um, I, I'm okay with adding a veteran and like a 30 plus year old veteran on the interior of the offensive line. Zeitler, I would prefer honestly at that price and in the shorter term than a Robert Hunt. I think they are very similar in how they play. And obviously Zeitler is not as much of a long-term answer, but I, I like the idea of the vet interior offensive lineman that I, I am, I'm in on, uh, as I said, I compared it to, you know, when the Jets added Alan Fanica in 2008, it worked wonders for, you know, the 08 and 09 Jets. So I'm in on it. Now, some guys I would avoid on the interior. I'll give you three guys, uh, all different kind of price points. Uh, one is Dalton Reisner, a left guard. His projected cost is three years with a 5.5 million AAV. He's just not a very good run blocker. Um, he's a little bit of a name recognition guy. Uh, his last off season didn't really go the way that he thought it was going to go. He kind of bet on himself and was hanging around for a while. He, 
below average. I think that just there's better guys on the market um, than Dalton Reisner. Uh, then Damian Lewis is another name. Uh, he's projected to be a little bit more costly at four years, 9.5 million in AAV. He struggles in pass protection with the quicker rushers. Like he kind of holds up well against like the big beefers in the middle of the offensive line. But if there's a interior guy who's a little bit more speedy or a little more of a finesse guy than a power guy, he at times struggles with that one. Um, I, again, like, is he the worst player in the league? No, but for his cost and the other options out there, I think I'd rather go a different direction. And then the last one is really, he'd be cheap. I, I think he's probably $3 million, maybe in that range, Greg Van Roten, but just bad memories, bad vibes with G, uh, GVR. He had one good year with the, the Raiders or a couple good years actually with the Raiders. Uh, but it just uh, not not for me. I don't think I'd go down that road again if I'm the Jets. For some guys that I like, Zeitler, Graham Glasgow, right guard, left guard, center. His projected contract two years, six point five million AAV. He's an incredible run blocker, reliable vet. John Runyon, three years, six point six seven AAV. Right guard, solid pass protector. He worked well with Aaron Rodgers. That's a former Rodgers teammate that I'd actually be like semi interested in. Uh, I'm kind of in that like let's pay between the six to ten million dollar range find a guy in there who you think could start and play games for you i don't think you have to spend 15 plus million dollars on the on uh guard uh and i think those are the names that i like the best now i want to do centers uh because again as i said the jets could go the veteran center route and instead move uh the tipman who they drafted last year to guard he played guard last year and was good there and some think because of his size, he's a little bit too big for center and work would work better actually at guard. Moral of the story, we're going to talk about it. Connor Williams is a name that I like, but unfortunately he tore his ACL in week 14. So that's a pass for me. Lloyd Cushenberry, 26 years old. He's projected to get a pretty big contract though. Four years, 12.5 million AAV, 14 pressures, a sack, five penalties. He's been solid. He's going to be costly though. And this was his best year. I get worried a little bit about guys who are... You know, just had this stellar one year right before they become a free agent and they're going to cash in with a mega, mega big contract. And he would get paid at, at 12.5 million. That's towards the top of the market for centers. And I don't think he's a top of the market center. I think he's average. But I, if you're going to go for an average center, the guy I'd rather go with is Tyler Biadish, same age, 26 years old. But he's projected to get three years with a $7 million AAV, so essentially half the price. He allowed just three sacks this year, only four in his entire career. Penalties have calmed down a little bit over the last few years, which is good. Plays every game, 17, 16, 16 games over the last three years. He's, like I said, he's more of an average center, but he's a smart player, good upside, nice bang for your buck in comparison options. Uh, and I would just avoid the name that I'm putting in highlights to avoid do not sign. Aaron Brewer from the Tennessee Titans. Now, he had a good year in 2023, but here's the kicker. This was his only productive year in the NFL in his career so far. Guess why? Offensive line coach Keith Carter was gone. Keith Carter, was the, who's the current Jets offensive line coach, was with Brewer for early on in his career. Keith Carter leaves, Brewer has a career year, and then you're going to pay him to reunite with Keith Carter with the Jets? I just don't see that one working out. I'd avoid it. Wide receivers up next, and I would like the Jets to attack the uh, the trade market, but with this one, I'm going to give you options all, there, all across the board. I'll give you guys that I like, guys that I don't like, and in the comments, you let me know. Other guys we could talk about. Um, but Calvin Ridley at three years, $18.5 million. He's at the higher end of the market as a guy that I would like. I think he's worth paying that money. Uh, he's a thousand yard a season guy. He's a higher end wide receiver too. Um, productive player, good route runner, gets open. Uh, Tyler Boyd is someone that I really like a lot. He's a slot receiver, so it's a little bit different. Like if you want Garrett Wilson to play in the slot more this year, then maybe Tyler Boyd's not your guy. But two years, $8.25 million. He, um, for most of his career, was a solid number one or two option in Cincinnati. Then we know with T. Higgins and the addition of Jamar Chase, he kind of went down the pecking order. But he is someone who's going to get paid like a wide receiver three that has much more upside than your average wide receiver three and could be a good wide receiver too. Now, if like if you could do trade for Cortland Sutton or Deontay Johnson and add Tyler Boyd or some of these other names that I'm going to get to next, 
now we're really cooking. Curtis Samuels, another one I'll give you two years, 8.5 million. So in the similar contract here to Tyler Boyd, uh, just a really interesting weapon. Uh, I, I kind of like that one. I would be interested in that. Uh, and then Kendrick Bourne, two years, $7 million AAV. This is a good wide receiver three. Unfortunately, just he was in a bad spot last year in New England where he was pretty much asked to be their number one wide receiver, and he that's not his game. He's a reliable pass catcher in short yardage situations. Like He's not going to go streaking down the field, but you, know, you need a guy to get open underneath. Kendrick Bourne's your guy for that. And as a third option, I think that's, that's fine. Now, some names that I don't really like, MVS, former uh, teammate uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, uh, former teammate of Aaron Rodgers. Just, I'm all good there. Pass. Paying Gabe Davis big money. He's This is someone who's a wide receiver three who's been put in a position where he's been a wide receiver two and one of the more pass-happy offenses in the league and still been underwhelming at times. He'll give you six for 100 one week and then go two games without a catch. It's just I, I don't want to deal with that kind of inconsistency, especially at the price point at four years, 13.6 million AAV. All good there. Hollywood Brown, four years at 14.8 million. <sighs> I'm, I don't love that one. And then, like, Odell, if he's going to get another one-year deal at 10-plus million. If he ends up being a little bit on, more on the cheaper side at one for five and is a wide receiver three and you add someone else, maybe that's a different story. But my fear would be they'd add Odell at the one-year 10-plus million and be like, we're good with Odell, Alan Lazard, and Garrett Wilson. I'm like, Ugh. No, I don't I don't think that's good enough at the wide receiver room. Okay, let's go to RB2 because that's a position that the Jets could look to add. I'll give you uh, a few like names and a few not so the ones I would avoid. In the like category, J.K. Dobbins, one year, $2 million. He's coming off an injury, but he's rehabbed with Aaron Rodgers and they apparently get along you know, very, very well. He's still young. Injuries are a concern, so that's uh, there is risk involved, but it's an extremely low low cost move. So it's a potential high reward on that. Uh, when on the field, he's a solid player. And as a compliment piece, like you're not relying on Dobbins to be your RB one, he'd be spelling Brees Hall. So an interesting one. I also like Devin Singletary, who's projected to get a three year deal, 4.25 million AAV. He's done a really solid job. I'm not saying he's a star by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, he did well in Houston this past year. He was solid in Buffalo as a rotational piece. I think he'd do a lot worse. And then I'll give you Zach Moss, two years, 3.75 million AAV. Someone who was drafted by Buffalo that ends up going to uh, Indy. Solid. Again, is he a star? No. Can he average 4.2 yards a carry as an RB2 and just be a reliable running? That's what the Jets need. They need a, vet, a reliable veteran running back in the mix as well with this group. Zach, don't pay crazy money. Just, yeah, someone who's going to get $4 million or less, somewhere in that range. What I don't like and what I would avoid in RB2 is spending big money on a running back who was a former number one who was once a very big name, kind of like what they did with Dalvin Cook last year. So that's no to, like, Saquon, Eckler, Henry. That's not the route that I would go. Uh, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. I think Saquon's going to try to go somewhere where he could still be an RB1. I would love to put a name like um, uh, a, a name like DeAndre Swift on this list. I think he's going to get like six to seven million dollars. Um, that's a nice deal for a guy like that. But I think he's going to go somewhere to be a starting running back. So I don't have him on this list. But DeAndre Swift is a name that I like and I wouldn't mind paying in that five to seven million dollar range. But I think he's going to go somewhere to be an RB one. Uh, and then AJ Dillon. Uh, an Aaron Rodgers teammate who he's a big running back. He's a big boy. So you would think, oh, he's good in short yardage situations. Not really. Ask any Green Bay Packers fan how they feel about A.J. Dillon in short yardage spots. That's not really his strength. Two years, $3.25 million. So he's cheap, but I'd rather go Zach Moss or Devin Singletary in that price range than A.J. Dillon. Last piece on the offense, we got to talk about backup quarterback. Backup quarterback is a position of need for the New York Jets. I'll give you three guys who I'm, I like, and then I'll give you a couple who I would try to 
avoid. Actually, I might give you more. I might give you four names that I like. The first name will go Jacoby Brissett. That is my favorite option for the New York Jets in free agency. Jacoby Brissett expected one year, six point five million dollar contract. I'm comfortable giving him up to eight, nine million dollars a year. This is someone who whenever he comes in, he just manages the game. He's not going to turn the ball over. That's what I like from my backup quarterback. I don't love these high variance backup quarterbacks, but someone who could come in manage the game. The Jets got burned last year by not having a legit backup quarterback. I think they go out there and spend the money, and Brissett is someone who they've kept a close eye on. Apparently, they're going to be in on Gardner Minshew. I think he's going to get a decent amount of money. His projected deal, though, is two years at an $8.75 million AAV. Started a bunch of games for Indianapolis last year. I think he's you know, a good spot starter, good backup quarterback would be a lot of fun to sit behind Aaron Rodgers, right? Like, I just love the the flowing hair, the beard, the whole thing. Easy guy to root for. Ryan Tannehill's another name to watch just because of his connection with the Tennessee staff. And the Jets have like the entire Tennessee Titans staff uh, on this team. Uh, he's up there in age now. He's going to be 36 years old in 2024. Fine backup spot starter at this point in his career. I don't think he's you know going to go and get a starting job. Maybe Pittsburgh, but I, I don't know. I think probably at this point he's better suited in a backup role. Um, two years, seven point five million AAV. Not going to cost you a ton of money. The Jets were supposedly very high on Ryan Tannehill last off season before they got Aaron Rodgers. That was a name that they were considering acquiring and they liked a lot. So with him on the market, I would look for him again. Tyrod Taylor is another one that I like. Injuries kind of not derail him, but that's something to watch. Two years, $4.5 million as a backup. Um, he's one of the guys who I've just really liked for a long time in this league. Like even when he was with Buffalo going up against the Jets, I was like, I don't know. There's something about Tyrod Taylor like I like. Has a cannon for an arm, could push the ball down the field, throws one of the most beautiful deep balls in the game. Again, injuries a l- slightly concerning, so he's a little bit lower on the pecking order for me, um, but a name to keep a close eye on. Guys that I honestly, I think I would just avoid. Jameis Winston, he's projected to get a one-year, $4 million deal. Remember I talked about those high variance guys? That's Jameis. He could win you a game, but he could also lose you a game because of the turnovers uh, in the season where he had like 5,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. Like, I don't want that from my backup quarterback. I want a backup quarterback who's going to come in, not do too much. Just, you know, can you if the can you go two and one with him as a starter? With Jameis, maybe, but like, He could also have a game where he's just going to throw four interceptions. Uh, And that's why, hold your ears, uh, uh, Sam Sexuals, Sam Darnold, unfortunately, I would put in this category as well because of the turnovers. Um, Yes, there's no denying Sam Darnold has had a a better NFL career thus far than Zach Wilson. But one, I don't think they do that reunion anyway, bring him back at this point. His projected deal is one year at four seven five million, but... One of the things with Darnold, that even still at this point, he's going to be 27 years old soon. Like turnovers are a part of his game, and I just I, I wouldn't want that circus. Plus, I think he's going to go somewhere where not that Darnold's a circus, but just you know, you moved on from this guy, now you're bringing him back, like that whole thing. I just I would rather avoid that. I think. Okay, defensive side of the ball, really only a couple spots like defensive tackle and safety we'll take a look at in names that I like Sheldon Rankins former Jet two years 10 million dollar AAV good interior pass rusher he played well with the Jets he played well in his one year in in Houston he's going to get paid again you could also just bring back like Quentin Jefferson I'd be fine with that he'd be a lot cheaper probably like one year three and a half million dollar AAV I'm good bringing him back Um, And then a name that they're going to be connected to that is intriguing is Javon Kinlaw, one year, $5.5 million because of his relationship with Robert Sala. Sala was there in San Francisco when he was drafted in 2020. He's been a little underwhelming, kind of like Solomon Thomas, right? Like a first round pick who's been a little bit under underwhelming uh, in San Fran, but could serve a role as a rotation guy. Um, So like maybe the Jets decide to bring back Quentin Jefferson and add Javon Kinlaw, but I'd be okay with that. And then for don't like, this is going to be very broad, but I don't want to spend like mega money for like Wilkins, Leonard Williams, DJ Reader. Like the the Jets already paid big money to Quinn and Williams and who deserves it, by the way, on the interior. I'm talking about like find someone who you could put next to him in that $10 million or less range. I don't think you need to be paying like, I don't know, what's Wilkins going to get? He's probably going to get close to 20. Leo and DJ Reader are going to be what 
12 to 15 million. I don't think they need to go that high uh, in that range. So I'd go on the cheaper, more bargain area on the defensive tackle spot or just retain the guys. Bring back Quentin Jefferson, bring back Solomon Thomas, and, and you're cooking. Okay, so I'm literally editing the video and the Jets re-signed Chuck Clark. I think that's the right decision, by the way. I One of the things I said is, honestly, I'd probably rather just re-sign Chuck Clark and Ashton Davis and pair them with Tony Adams. And that's what they ended up doing. So we scratched the safety segment because uh, Chuck Clark is back. They still need to re-sign Ashton Davis. Um, Jordan Whitehead, I think they're going to let walk, rightfully so. And other names I listed at Strong Safety that I wasn't really a big fan of. Uh, really, the main one was Darnell Savage uh, from the Green Bay Packers. One good year, and before that, and even this year, just a missed tackle machine. So I'm happy with the Chuck Clark re-signing. He is a significantly better tackler. They gave up a seventh-round pick for him last year, and I was looking forward to him play. Like, that was a major bummer that he missed the season last year. Um, so, yeah, I'm in on this move. I think it was a smart decision, and that'll do it. And then last, just quick note. Resign Greg Zerloin, Thomas Morstead, and uh, Hardy. I think that would be the move there. Let me know your thoughts on my free agency preview. Again, a little bit of a longer video, but I think it was important to go through all of this with you. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time.